I want to do a recap. I just did a whole lecture at a national dermatology convention on allergic reactions to hair products. And I found out so many new and interesting things that I brought to the doctors, but I'm going to bring them to the people. Number one, you can be allergic to your shampoos and conditioners. Now, most people don't think that could be the case because they're only stay in contact with your skin for several seconds, but it is. And people that are allergic to shampoo and conditioners get what's called a wash off pattern where your rashes develop in front of your ear, down your neck, and then behind your ear, down your neck, because your ear blocks the liquid. So you develop this pattern. Now that's most common in women in that pattern. Also around both eyes, upper and lower eyes. That kind of pattern of a rash usually indicates that you're allergic to a shampoo or conditioner. Now for men, it's very interesting. Men usually do not get that wash off pattern. Men don't get the eyelid pattern. Men get a generalized rash on their body just everywhere. The reason is this. The products that men use for their shampoo also have very similar ingredients for their body. And the soap stays in contact longer with their body than the shampoo is with their scalp. So they develop their reactions on their body. Where do you think the most common area to get a rash is if you put like a hair gel on your scalp? You think the rash is gonna happen on your scalp? That's what most people would think. Mark just said that he thinks the rash would happen on the scalp. Ain't true, say it ain't so. Allergic reactions very rarely occur on the scalp skin for basically three reasons. One, the skin is much thicker. Two, so it can't penetrate down to the area that involves our immune system to develop an allergic reaction. Two, you got hair on your scalp. The hair produces oil, and that oil dilutes the chemicals that are coming in contact with your scalp, and also creates a thin protective layer on the top of your scalp, so there's more like protection there. But the most important is the T regulatory cells. T regulatory cells are cells that our body makes to prevent us from having allergic reactions, in particular to our own body parts and also in particular to the different bacteria that live on our body that keep us healthy. Now what they find is that these little baby cells, T regulatory cells like to live where there's the most hair. So that is why we don't have the allergic reactions on our scalp because the T regulatory cells are most abundant on the hair on our scalp and you can't get the reactions because they protect your body from them. So when you have an allergic reaction to something you're putting on your scalp, the reaction occurs elsewhere. Except in three situations. These are the top three situations where you can get an actual rash on your scalp that's due to an allergic reaction. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde we see in certain products, but in particular, hairspray. And so with hairspray, you can actually get the allergic reaction on your scalp. Formaldehyde is also in hair relaxers. And we can see allergic reactions on the scalp to people that use the hair relaxers. And then the last and final thing that could cause a reaction actually on your scalp is topical Rogaine. You could be allergic to the actual medicine ingredient, minoxidil, in the Rogaine, and you will develop the rash, not elsewhere, but actually on the scalp. Those are the only three things that you can get an allergic reaction on the scalp. If you have a rash on your scalp and your doctor's telling you it's an allergic reaction, you better about face and run out that door because they don't know what the hell they're doing. If you want to learn more about this topic, you could visit us at cinederm.com or call our office at 718 491-5800.